Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Midgard Musings today and watching today's video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel, as you may or may not already know. If this is your first time, I appreciate your support. For everybody else who's already supported Midgard Musings through your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions, thank you very much. I want to call to attention the fact that I am actively and aggressively seeking 2,000 subscribers by or before January 1st, 2020. All right, that means that we need to get at least three new subscribers every day until then, and your help is greatly appreciated. I couldn't do this, well, I could do this if it wasn't for each and every one of you, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun because I would just be talking to nobody. All right, so everybody's participation and involvement on this channel is greatly appreciated. I invite you to please write down here, see it, right down there, please click that subscribe button don't want to miss any videos here on this channel be sure to click the bell notifications because then you will get notified every time that I upload new content all right guys I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's support and I look forward to learning new things with each and every one of you about Norse heathenry Germanic paganism all that kind of fun stuff so please become a subscriber today that button is right down here it costs you literally nothing to become a subscriber and then if you want to be notified just click the bell for notifications it's all right if you don't but it is appreciated if you do check the description down below for all the other ways that you can support Midgard Musings through Facebook Patreon Teespring Redbubble uh, anything else that you see down there click on the links follow them see if it's something that fits you I appreciate all your support let's jump in to today's video hail and thank you all Hey guys, real quick, I just wanted to uh, call some attention to a great YouTube channel that I think you all should check out. Uh, he's a friend of mine, a fellow heathen. He's the Godi of the Hridgar folk out there in East Texas, United States. And his name is Eric Wordweaver Shervin. Uh, and his YouTube channel is called The Raven's Call. Um, if you go to YouTube and just search The Raven's Call and the YouTube search, you'll find his channel. He does weekly videos usually uploads, I believe, on Wednesday, really early Wednesday morning, uh, Central Time. I think his videos typically go up like 4 a.m. Central Time. So they're up really early in the day, in the middle of the week. Great content, um, really neat approach to, to heathenry. He's got a, a great, um, I think, a great view um, for not just you know heathens coming into this path new, um, but also folks that have kind of been treading this path for a while and maybe uh, learning things as they go. And, and Eric's a great source to learn things from. I know I've learned a lot. So I definitely encourage everybody that's listening here on the podcast to take a moment and go check out Eric's channel. Again, that's The Raven's Call. Uh, he also does some neat uh, media reviews on that channel, um, uploaded on a different schedule. I think he calls that the uh, Raving Ravens Reviews. Uh, it's pretty fun stuff. He does like uh, reviews on video games, movies, uh, comics uh, basically i think video uh, uh, any kind of media really um so that he just started that but anyways really great channel really awesome guy um i've had uh the pleasure of collaborating with him a bit so please go ahead and check out eric's channel appreciate your guys support let's get back to the podcast Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thanks for listening. My name's Jesse, and uh, I do podcasts here uh, somewhat regularly, uh, depending on how busy I am through the week. I may put up a few episodes here. Um, it just really kind of depends on things that are going on in my life and what free time I have. Uh, you can always catch me uh, on regular you know, broadcasts and uh, material that gets uploaded to my other social media platforms on YouTube and Facebook. You go to youtube.com slash Midgard Musings and become a subscriber, click bell notifications so way you're notified every time I upload new content. I have videos that get published there on uh, Sunday nights um, after my Facebook live stream, which is on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, if you go to facebook.com slash Midgard Musings TN, 
you can follow the page there. Um, there should be an option for you to see these posts first from that page. And that way, um, whenever I do go live, um, you, you'll be notified. So it should be like an easy default setting. Um, you don't have to change it if you don't want to, but that's where you can definitely catch me regularly once a week. Um, and I do upload daily stuff on the Facebook page and sometimes other stuff on the YouTube channels, but there's that. So anyways, guys, thanks for listening. I hope you guys are enjoying the podcast thus far and the things that we're talking about relating to Norse heathenry, uh, some things that are viewed very strongly and, um, and, you know, things that are important within a Germanic pagan society or this Germanic pagan, uh, subculture. And, uh, Anyways, last episode we talked about the concept of Inengard and Utengard, the inner yard and outer yard, and how that sort of plays into a modern heathen society or modern heathen approach. Um, please keep in mind as well that anything that I say here on my podcast is really just my views and the things that I've come to learn and how I've applied it to myself as a heathen. Um, don't take my word for anything in terms of this is not the one all sort of canon view of heathenry because there is no such thing how people practice heathenry what people do um, in their own heathen practices is entirely that okay there's nothing that really we can say as being just one way for all heathens to, to act or behave there's a lot of similarities but it's there's nothing that's just canon uh rules of, of you know regulations or anything like that so bear that in mind as i say what i say that this is largely just my view and how I sort of approach things. So today's episode is going to be about something that um, you'll see a name or a title um, get used within heathenry, and that is a term needing or needinger. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit. The reason why we're talking about this now is because last episode was about Inengard, Utengard, you know, what it takes to be the inner yard, um, how that position or how that title is um, sort of earned or bestowed and how it can be lost and how one can become Utengard. So <clears throat> we're going to talk today about Niedinger, uh the state of being sort of a villain or outlaw. And this is something that um, can happen within heathen tribes um, and kindreds nowadays to somebody who has uh, broken the bonds of Frith, um, Frith being sort of the, uh, you know, it's not just peace. We did it. We did a, a previous episode um, on Frith, but uh, it's it's more than just peace. There's this there's this trust level um, that exists when you share Frith with people, and it it goes more than just this uh, level of peace and um, you know, harmony and, and love, there's, there's a trust level in there. So when Frith is broken, when things are done that can cause someone to not just be cast out of the inner yard, they're, they are VR, they are beyond what is Utengard because Utengard can still be part of the community, right? Um, needing being Niedinger is something that casts you out even beyond Utengard. It, it casts you out so far out that you are not even within the realm of the community anymore. You have become a villain. You've you have broken something of, of a law or something of a societal um, agreement of you know conducting yourself. Um, it is an old uh, Norse word neith. You have Old English neith uh, or neith uh, that 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 d sound that kind of has a bit of a you know hard th sound at the end of it so it's like need um you'll see it spelled n-i-t-h-i-n-g you'll spell it with the n-i and then the the, the icelandic th sound for the um it's kind of the same pronunciation as in beneath uh or you know the that that, that sort of pronunciation um but you're 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 at basically when you are need <laughs> if you are needing uh or needinger you are basically at the lowest of the low you are at the bottom of the freaking barrel and you have no um structure you have no place in society anymore now this was done um in in ancient you know germanic society and in, in kind of the archie in times 
for those that did certain things. Um, you had some who, uh, you know, in old Scandinavian laws, um, there were those who, and again, this is this is just historical stuff. This isn't uh, something that I feel has a, a, a an actual place in modern heathen society. But you had those who back then who uh, were ergi, okay, um, or uh, orger, uh, the, sort of the effeminate uh, males. Uh, th this also included those who uh, engaged in. Uh, homosexuality uh, as being the male bottom, uh, those who uh, were being a slave to the uh, to somebody above them being a save mother, uh, which is uh, a form of sorcery that is practiced or was practiced only by women. So some of these things, if you were found out to be doing these things, these could get you cast out of society as a needing or needinger. There's other examples um, in the sagas of um, people who did things um, and, and, and as such uh, were cast out. There had to be some sort of scolding or, or punishment, uh, public shaming um, uh, that, 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 had to be hap that had to happen. Um, they had what were called uh, needing poles or need stung. Um, and it was a pole that was used for cursing an enemy um, or, or cursing this person. Sorry for the crackling on the mic there. My apologies. Uh, and basically what it consisted of was a long wooden pole um, either held or, or implanted in the ground. Um, and, it, and it usually had a recently cut horse head on the top of it. Um, sometimes it had the skin of the horse laid over the pole and it was directed or, or held toward the person or the enemy uh, that who the curse was targeted for. Um, you can also see examples of uh, runes being carved on the pole. Um, for one particular example, we have Egil's saga. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to read a, a section of it to kind of give you that historical backing of of what a knee thing or knee a kneading pole did. Uh, so in Egil's saga, it says, uh, and when all was ready for sailing, Egil went up into the island. He took in his hand a hazel pole and went to a rocky eminence that looked inward to the mainland. Then he took a horse's head and fixed it on the pole. After that, in solemn form of curse, he thus spake. Here set I up a curse pole, and this curse I turn on King Eric and Queen Gunhilda. Here he turned the horse's head landwards. This curse I turn also on the guardian spirits who dwell in this land, that they may all wander astray, no reach or find their home till they have driven out of the land King Eric and Gunhilda. This spoken, he planted the pole down in a rift of the rock and let it stand there. The horse's head he turned inwards to the mainland, but on the pole he cut runes, expressing the whole form of curse. Now, again, if you've read the whole saga um, or, or get a chance to read the whole saga, you'll see why this is done. But again, the curse was directed not only at the, per the person or people who he uh, who Egil wanted uh, curse, but he also directed it and um, towards the land the, the the spirits of the land um, to scare them, to keep them from bringing good luck to the land and to the people on the land. So it was a generalized just badness you know just bad things that were um directed towards land so there's a historical example of what uh you know needing or need stung was um so we have in in you know uh concepts of, of of ancient germanic paganism this concept of what's what is honorable um what is a, a good name your reputation that sort of thing your gefrain which we'll be actually talking about in this uh upcoming episode on youtube um, the subject or the concept of the gefrain. The gefrain is your reputation. Uh, the lengths to which uh, ancient Norse society went in order to protect your name and protect your reputation and your honor um, were, were far further. It was a very highly esteemed thing, um, maybe much different from Western society and in a lot of ways, especially in modern uh, Western society. 
you basically had a range of behaviors that within the Norse society um, kind of ran the gamut. You had those who were uh, drengiskapr. If you were drenger, you were admired and you had deeds who were honorable. Um, if you were neither, you know, uh, neithinger, you had the, the lesser than that. You were doing things of shame and uh, worthy of, of a curse. Um, so the state of neither was something that was despised and actions of Nidinger would be avoided and reviled, you know? Um, yeah, Snorri Sturluson writes, and I can't remember exactly where, but he's, he's, he defines those of Drenger status or valiant men who exert a good influence. They have, you know, things of bravery, nobility, sense of uh, kind of fair play, uh, respect, the strength to do what's right, um, a sense of personal integrity and honor, physical bravery, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, um, Nidinger is, is opposite. They are outcasts. They are hateful they, uh, or hated and, and scorned. Um, breaking oaths uh, could could have something uh, or could have someone uh, be defined as Nidinger. Uh, your ca if you were cowardice, any sort of treachery, shameful acts, you know, killing or uh, slaying your kin, um, killing a woman, uh, various things in, in the sagas that um, would, that would cause somebody to be neither. And then also specifically is uh, when one betrays the trust of another. And the reason why I'm talking about this now is because I'm, I'm, I'm referring to and, and citing some historical things, you know, stuff that you may not necessarily do now. We're not going to necessarily at least in in modern society anyways a lot of places would very would, would would bring a lot of unnecessary attention to poles with horse heads impaled on the top of them and, and runes and this very spooky stuff uh that could really draw unnecessary attention but there is still this concept of the one who is needing things that are done within our heathen tribes our, our heathen communities that can def defile or or, or uh, ridicule people, bring ridicule on some, and cause those, these people to be outcast and, and to be villains. Um, the reason why, again, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it, it, it's it's a necessary part. I feel anyway, it's a necessary part of maintaining the societal structure that our heathen ancestors lived and operated in. You don't have to necessarily be a reconstruction heathen, a reconstructionist heathen, to fully adopt everything about uh, you can you can sort of implement or uh, incorporate parts of things into into your own practices. And again, this is going to be entirely up to you. It's 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 also going to be on if you tie yourself to a tribe or a kindred of sorts, um, you're going to kind of be um, sworn to follow the uh, rules and laws or thews of that said collective okay um i've recently had to uh declare someone who i not only invited to my in and guard but who i you know felt was trustworthy who did things that i felt were uh deeds to remember him by and and to uh, find him worthy of being in and guard by uh, i've recently had to declare this person needing uh, or needing or um, they are not only outside of of my fence they are so far beyond and so far out that I've, I've have declared and have you know cursed that the direction in which this person has gone they are needing her um, now can somebody worth their way outside of that statute of that status maybe um, and that's going to depend on the nature of the crime of, or, or the nature of the deed that caused that person to be uh, needing. And um, uh, it also is going to depend on the person who declared uh, and did curse that, that person. If things change uh, and, and if there's a, a turnaround of sorts um, and they've worked their way um, back into earning themselves back into society and, and work themselves closer to that person then perhaps yes um but again it's it's a very you know 
to declare someone as needing her uh, is a very serious thing and it's a very you don't take it I don't take it lightly I don't I don't I actually I can't think of anybody up until recently who maybe one other person yeah actually one other person um, but again in, in my years of, of being a heathen and now four to five years of, of being a heathen myself and learning all these things uh, I, those, those two occasions have been the only time because it is such a, a heavy and weighty thing to inflict um, and it's a sad thing that it's it when when something like this happens um, especially nowadays I mean I'm, we're look again looking back at the like some of the historical reasons why somebody was considered needing you know I don't I don't look at the the, the you know practicing Sayyid Kona, Sayyid Madra, all that stuff today, uh, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. Our societies need it. Our, our heathen communities need folks to be able to do it. Odin himself, even though he was you know, ridiculed and um, thought of a certain way among his tribe for, for learning Sayyid Kona uh, and Sayyid Madra, it's to learning, learning Sayyid, I'm not going to put... I'm not going to consider somebody ergi or or needing for for doing that today. Nor do I consider anyone uh, that is homosexual or trans or anything like that to be to be needing. Or that that's not what our society functions as today. And I don't feel that there's any place in that in modern heathen society. Now again, that's just me. But we're not really getting into that. What I think is is what 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 can cause someone to be needing or nowadays are the definite acts of betrayal you've betrayed frith you have broken your promises you have broken your oaths um and not all oath breakers would be needing but again depending on the uh, so solemnness of your oath um, again oath breakers aren't something that we look well upon in any sense um but especially when you've uh, agreed to uphold the bonds of frith and to maintain um good luck with the person you've tied and weird with and, and all these types of things when that has been just vehemently betrayed and and you've done something so you know villainous as as to uh, make that separation between friend and foe now you like you you've it wasn't a gradual thing like you did something so heinous or something so bad then yes you are now a villain you are outlaw you are you are neevinger um so that's guys that's the episode for today i hope that if you were wondering what it is uh to be needing um you've read about it you weren't too sure maybe hope i hope that what we talked about today has helped shed a light on that subject um, again, tune in tomorrow. Uh, right now it's uh, Saturday, and uh, tomorrow, Sunday, is uh, the 7th of July um, at 7 p.m. Central Time. Join me on, on Facebook. I do a live stream on Facebook, and we're going to be talking about Gefrain, our reputation, our, um, our good name, that sort of thing. So join me tomorrow for that. Be sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Midgard Musings. Appreciate all your support, and until next time, hail, may your ancestors smile on you, and may the gods continue to walk with you.